big crowd pleaser. Uh, it was a couple people's lifer, so that was really neat. It did end up hopping and was out in a little better view, so incredible owls on the boardwalk. There are some birding locations that have built up such a reputation that people from all over the country have heard of them. One such location is McGee Marsh in northern Ohio, consisting of wetlands, Lake Erie coastline, and a famous boardwalk. This marsh serves as one of the centerpieces of the biggest week in American birding festival that takes place in the region each May. We got the chance to explore this hallowed birding spot and experience everything it has to offer. Hey everyone, this is Ryan and Derek from Badgerland Birding. Today we are in Ohio and we are birding one of the top spots in the state or maybe even the country during migration for birding and that's McGee Marsh. McGee Marsh is a really cool place, well known for its boardwalk, but it has a lot of other expansive areas to check out as well. So we're just on the road on the way in. There's marsh on either side and woods on either side, so you can definitely pick up stuff from the road. Derek, are you excited to check out everything McGee Marsh has? I'm super pumped. We've been kind of exploring this area earlier in the week, but say we're really going to kind of be dedicated to checking out everything the marsh has to offer. One thing that's interesting this spring is there's loads of Canada geese with babies and they hang out right on the side of the road so you really got to watch out and be careful. And then uh, we've mostly been doing the boardwalk so today we're going to expand out and check out some of the other areas as well. The road leading up to the boardwalk can be a great place to find different species. But on this day, we didn't spend too much time there and instead headed straight for McGee Marsh's most prominent feature. We're here at one of the entrances into the boardwalk and there's actually two different entrances, one on the east and one on the west, and you could follow it all the way through. Uh, we're about to experience a lot of people and a lot of birds all kind of milling about on the boardwalk. It's really interesting because you'll see people looking at something and you have to kind of figure out if it's something that you want to look at, but it should be a crazy experience. The boardwalk leans into its status as a major birding location and is set up to help birders. So one thing that's nice is they have a bunch of pictures of the warblers that you could see in the spring. So if people come here, they can see the different birds they might see, and then they can go try to find them out on the trail. So I think the state and the festival do a really great job in providing education opportunities for birders of all levels. Having checked out the outer portion of the boardwalk, we geared up for what was sure to be a wild experience, since we were there in the middle of the biggest week festival, and people from all over the country were there birding. You ready to enter the boardwalk? Yeah, it looks congested, so we'll see what we can find here. Um, the good thing about the boardwalk is that there's a lot of eyes. The bad thing is there's a lot of people. <laughs> so it's like there's good and bad to it. When birding on the boardwalk, the big groups of people are indicators of where the most interesting birds are. As soon as we entered, we noticed one of these groups, and the bird they were viewing was one of the most colorful warblers in the country. Blackburnian warbler causing a commotion. It is giving incredible views right now. Blackburnian warbler definitely always causes a stir. In my opinion, it's one of the most beautiful warblers on the planet, so really nice find to start off. We spent some time in this part of the boardwalk, consistently finding more warbler species. Had a really nice experience with the magnolia warbler. You can kind of just pick a spot to stand and eventually birds will come out and it'd be in front of you. So if you wait long enough, I feel like you're bound to see something cool right in front of your face. This tall tree's been a gold mine for warblers, but the problem is the lighting is absolutely abysmal, yeah. so it's hard to tell what's in there. But there was a blue wing, which was really cool. That's the first one I've actually gotten a clear look at. But hopefully we can pick some more out of there. It's really tough going, though. black and blue warbler? Magnolia warbler? American red star? You can kind of just stand anywhere and stuff will pop out. We've had some great finds in the boardwalk so far. The Prathana cherry was singing, uh, the black burning it was amazing. Uh, Ryan saw a garter snake with flyover pelicans. We're going to kind of move through the crowd to see what else we can get because I think 
There's a crowd in front of us. I think they're all looking at the Prothonotary. So we're going to go past them and see if we can find some other warblers. After spending a relatively short amount of time in this part of the boardwalk, we decided to move down. Weaving our way through crowds of people, we continued finding different species of birds. Eventually, we found ourselves in an offshoot of the boardwalk, looking at one of the largest nests we had ever seen. So one of the main attractions on the boardwalk, besides the warblers, is the big eagle nest up here, and you can sometimes see the parents feeding the young. So always keep an eye out for stuff up in the trees. You kind of have to look everywhere. So look up high, middle, and low. You never know what you might find. In the same vicinity was a reptile species out sunning itself, serving as another cool animal to watch for on the boardwalk. So we have another snake out here sitting up on a log. So it's been a great day for herps as well as birds, and there's tons of people out here enjoying them. It is kind of nice to have the defined boardwalk trail because it really creates a barrier of, you know, people have to stay in that spot. They're not going to be out kind of in the area of the wildlife. So it kind of keeps everyone reined in, which is nice. You get to enjoy stuff like the snakes and the birds. It felt like every new part of the boardwalk had a new bird species showing well and creating a buzz with the birders. The next one was a very cute owl species. There is an eastern screech owl right here on one of the trees over the boardwalk. Tons of people got to see it and it was definitely a fan favorite of all of the birders here. Opened its eyes for a second, gave everyone a little look and then went back to preening and eventually back to sleeping. So a really nice experience all across the board. The owl was adorable. It's a big crowd pleaser. I was a couple people's lifer, so that was really neat. It did end up hopping and was out in a little better view, so incredible owls on the boardwalk. Having thoroughly explored the west side of the boardwalk, we made our way to the other half. We're moving toward the eastern end of the boardwalk, and this part of the boardwalk gets more marshy, so the species are different. So we expect to see more yellow warblers here, maybe some herons, stuff like that. So we're leaving behind some of the best wooded warbler habitat, but we will be back on the way toward the west end again, but we'll see what else we can find this way. The east side of the boardwalk is a lot more marshy than the west, and as a result, different species are more commonly found there. One of the attractions here on the boardwalk is green heron nests, and there's a couple different ones, and it's kind of something that everyone knows where they are, so there'll be a group here and they're like, oh, looking at the green herons, yeah. And that kind of happens on the boardwalk. There's different things that um, people know where they are, and they always attract crowds like the screech owls and the herons. This side of the boardwalk has been a yellow warbler paradise. There are so many of them up and calling, kind of close to the boardwalk sometimes, offering some good views. So that's a species that's very common, but still awfully pretty when you get a close look at it. Eventually, we made our way to the end of the boardwalk, which meant it was time to turn around and go all the way back. We immediately heard a few birds we hadn't spotted yet. There's an extremely stubborn water thrush in here that we've kind of gotten looks at, but nothing that's even great at all. I didn't get any media of it, so I'll put a picture or video of what one looks like on the screen for you, but there is one around here. After seeing some of the same species for the second time as we backtracked, we ended up at the boardwalk entrance, officially completing our trek on the most famous feature of McGee Marsh. That was a great time on the boardwalk. I heard somebody say you can really lose track of time in there, and I think that's 100% accurate. It just feels like you're immersed in the forest. You kind of go in, it's this whole experience. You're like, dang, how long have I been in there for? And then you come out and you continue about your day. So it's been really fun to hang out on the boardwalk. I see why everybody loves it so much. It does get a little congested in there, but it also helps people because there's always someone to kind of assist with IDs and help locate stuff. So it's a little give and take, really cool experience. Next, we went to another part of the marsh with a path known as the Estuary Trail that goes right along the shores of Lake Erie and then back into more marshy habitat. This trail had a bit more of a wild feel to it and provided some more warbler species. So we're now on the Estuary Trail, which kind of goes behind the boardwalk almost, and we're actually seeing a lot of good warblers in here and it's a lot less crowded. So if Boardwalk is too thick with people, you could come here and see some of the same species you might see on the boardwalk. We continued walking the grass trail with marsh on one side and woods on the other. Along the way, we continued finding warblers in the low underbrush and arrived at the confluence of Lake Erie and the marsh. Here we found trumpeter swans and wading birds. 
So this is, I think, about as far as we're going to walk on the estuary trail, but it's a really nice view out here. And I do think this is quieter than the boardwalk. So if you want to be kind of away from the people, this is definitely a good option for you. After scouring the most famous portions of the marsh, we had one more stop we wanted to make. We are now at the McGee Marsh Visitor Center. There are actually people birding kind of all over the parking lot. There's probably some cool species around. We're going to head inside and see what they have in terms of merchandise. And if we're lucky, we're going to find some cool apparel to wear. We went into the visitor center and checked out the different exhibits. Not only was the inside of the building nice, but the outside was as well, complete with a pond and plenty of habitat to explore. We also found a few birds as well, including an eastern Phoebe and Canada goose. Having spent an entire morning birding McGee Marsh, we called it a day. McGee Marsh is indeed an iconic place to go birding, and in many ways did actually live up to the hype. The boardwalk certainly offered a pleasant viewing experience, and the birds were showing well. Making it even more entertaining was the buzz in the air from all of the excited birders. McGee Marsh is certainly a place every birder needs to visit during migration, at least once in their life. Have you ever been to the legendary McGee Marsh? Let us know in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Badgerland Birding. Thank <music> you.